Welcome to Electron Line and continuing with our problems with conservation of momentum. We're still doing the type where they don't stick together and energy is conserved. That's the short way of saying energy is 100% conserved, which means that both momentum and energy will be conserved in the collision. Of course, in the real world, that doesn't really happen. The reason why we're doing several of these examples, one after the other, where the first one we start out by having zero velocity for the second object, now we're going to do the same problem, but now this object will have initial velocity of 5 meters per second, and see how that changes the problem. Okay, again, momentum is conserved and energy is conserved, and of course I should have E final right here, which means that potential uh, uh, momentum initial equals momentum final and energy initial equals energy final. The reason why we need both equations is because there's going to be two unknowns, the velocities of both objects after the collision. Since there's two unknowns, we're going to need two equations. All right, our first equation will be written as follows, m1 times v1 initial plus m2 times v2 initial equals m1 times v1 final plus m2 times v2 final. Notice everything on the left side of the equation is known. We know both initial velocities, we know their masses, but on the right side of the equation we do not know the final velocity for one and the final velocity for object number two. That's why we need that second equation because here we can write that one half uh, mv1 initial squared plus one half m2 v2 initial squared, that would be the kinetic energy of both objects before the collision, must equal one half m v1 final squared plus one half m2, this should be m1, that's m2 v2 final squared. So that would be the sum of the kinetic energies after the collision. Again, they both have v1 final and v2 final, both unknown. So we need to solve these equations simultaneously. So simplifying things a little bit, first we'll get rid of all the one-halves, <clears throat> and then we can plug in what these are equal to, so we have some number on the left side of the equation. So I'm going to leave out the kilograms and the meters per second because it's just a lot cleaner to work with. So we have 4 times 10 plus 2 times 5 equals, that would be 4 times v1 final, and that would be plus 2v2 final. And of course, combining this, this is 40 plus 10. So we have 50 is equal to 4v1 final plus 2v2 final. And finally, I can divide both sides by 2. And so this is 25 equals 2v1 final plus v2 final. So there we have our first equation that came from the conservation momentum, where we have the two unknowns, v1 final and v2 final. All right, doing, doing the same on the left, on the, this, uh, this equation right here, we have, uh, that would be 4 times 10 squared plus 2 times 5 squared equals, so that would be um, 4 times v1 final squared plus 2 times v2 final squared. So, and again, doing this exact same thing here, we're going to simplify, that would be 100 times 4, that's 400. 25 uh, times 2 is 50, that would be 450 is equal to 4v1 final squared plus 2v2 final squared. And finally, I can also divide both sides by 2, and this gives me 225 equals 2v1 final squared plus v2 final squared. And so there we have our second equation with the same two unknowns. Since this has the v1 and v2 finals squared, and this one that does not, to the first power, you want to solve this equation for one of the unknowns and plug it into this equation to solve for the other unknown. So let's do that. So here we can write that v2 final is equal to 25 minus 2 v1 final, simply moving this over to the other side. And then we take this and plug it into our equation. So we have v2 final solved, so we'll plug it into this right there. Okay, now I'm going to move it over to the left a little bit, so I have a little bit more room. So continuing over here, we have 225 equals 2v1 final squared plus, instead of v2 final, we're going to write what v2 final is equal to from our first equation. So that would be a plus 25 minus 2v1 final quantity squared, because that's what we have right here. And now notice now I have just an equation with only one unknown there, v1 final. Now I have to go through a little bit of algebra and the quadratic formula to solve for that. So let's do that. 
So I have 225 equals 2v1 final squared plus 25 squared is 625, twice the product of those two, that's 2 times 25 is 50, times 2 is 100, we still have the minus, so minus 100 v1 final, and finally the last term squared plus 4 v1 final squared. So that's how we square a binomial, is the first term squared plus the last term squared plus twice the product of the two. Okay, now we combine like terms and move everything over to one side. So I have 0 equals, we have a 2v1 final squared and 4v1 final squared, that gives me 6v1 final squared, minus 100v1 final, and finally when I move this over to here, I subtract 225 from 625 and I get plus 400. All right, uh, we could simplify because everything is even here, so just to make numbers a little bit smaller, I could write this as 0 is equal to 3 v1 final minus 50 v1 final plus 200. So at least the number is a little bit smaller now. And now let's use a quadratic formula to solve for that equation. So we can say then that v1 final is equal to minus b, which is plus 50, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 2,500, minus 4, times a, which is 3, times c, which is a positive 200. And the whole thing is divided by 2 times a, which is 6. All right, so that's using the quadratic formula. Now, did I bring my calculator? Right. I did not. So uh, my pen is here, my calculator is here. I can continue now with that problem. So we have, uh, that's 12 times 2,400. Wow, I didn't even need a calculator for that. Let's see. This is equal to 50 plus or minus the square root of, that's 2,500 minus 2,400, which is the square root of 100, divided by 6, which is equal to uh, 50 plus or minus 10 divided by 6. So if I add the two together, 50 plus 10, I get 6 divided by 6, which is equal to 10, or... If I subtract, I get 40 divided by 6, which is 6 and 2 thirds. That would be 6.67. All right, see, I didn't need my calculator. Oh, well. So we have two possible answers for V1. Now, one of those is, is a most likely answer. The other one is probably an impossible answer. So let's take a look. Uh, we're looking at V1. And V1 has initial velocity of 10 meters per second, and it's colliding with an object that's already moving to the right. And you would expect that after, v, after mass 1 collides with mass 2, that it will not keep the same velocity. So the 10 meters per second as an answer is an unlikely scenario, so this is probably not correct. So I'll probably use this answer right here. So this is the answer for V1 final. That makes a lot of sense. If a car collides against another car, it's not going to continue at the same speed that it was going before the collision. All right, so now that we know what V1 final is, we can then use this equation to find V2 final. So V2 final will be equal to 25 minus 2 times V1, which is 6.67. And of course, that's 13 and a third minus 25, so 25 minus 13.3333 equals, and so V2 final is going to be equal to 11.7 meters per second rounded off, and there's our second answer. That didn't come out quite right, there we go, V2 final. Okay, so those are the two answers then. So here you can see how this problem works. You use conservation momentum, conservation of energy, you have two unknowns in each equation, v1 final and v2 final, right there and right there. You solve them simultaneously. Once you have the two equations simplified, you solve for one variable in terms of the other, plug it into the second equation, use the quadratic formula, and then you get two possible answers. One of them, not a likely answer, the other one is the most probable answer. You take that one, and then you go ahead and plug it in here to get the second one, and there's your two velocities for v1 final and v2 final.